I would like to see Carl uh, Anthony Towns be a little bit more aggressive now that he has all these tools, how to use them. Towns and Embiid, of course, went head to head last night. And, and you know, it's, it's always fashionable, right? We were all on Anthony Davis and then everyone switched to Carl Anthony Towns last year. And then now everyone's mm -hmm. all excited by Joel Embiid. Who do you think has the stronger upside long term? This is tough. Both of these guys are phenomenal talents. Um, Embiid, with his footwork, reminds me Reminds Ooh, me a little gonna, bit. I know what you're going to say. Are you going to say the dream? Of, of dream. Oh, with my his, gosh. With his shake. footwork. Oh, shake. Mm -hmm. With his footwork. You don't see guys oh. in our league today doing stuff like this. That is this so, I love young. that side Seriously. to side. So show that again. This it's is so it's much hard fun. to <laughs> say both of their ceilings are extremely high because right. they're both talented guys. I, I will have to pick, you know, close my eyes and just pick one. So do it. Pick one. <laughs> I have to touch him. I mean, he's just okay. All right, well, I will pick one. Go. I'll say Carl Towns. Okay. Because I think Carl's got a more well-rounded game. Plus, mm -hmm. he doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna knock on wood as I say this. Okay, it's glass. So is that right. enough? <laughs> like <laughs> he doesn't have problems. injury history. Yeah. He's not on a minutes restriction. I mean, look at him shoot. He's got a three-point game. He is like it's. He's a five, but a, he's a stretch five. He's got an above-the-rim game. He is so skilled. And, he is. And you know, just maturity-wise, you've had him on the show. You've yeah, talked to him. Yeah, he is. I remember polished, talking to like him. Crazy. Talking to him last year, and we did this interview where like the mics weren't working, the camera wasn't working. He was sitting there waiting around 20 minutes. And we're all trying to stall, right? And right. he was telling me kind of what his summer was like. And I remember him saying, he goes, yeah, I really like being out in Los Angeles. I would actually just like go out and walk around. And I'm like, what do you mean walk around? He was like, yeah, I just walked down Melrose. And I'm like, just by yourself? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm fine. With it. And, it, and I've never heard a kid that young go around like Los Angeles just being curious right. about the world, curious about his place, and not needing a ton of people around right. him to validate nice. him. Right. I do his think you're right, though, job. about a veteran because they, Rubio obviously is a better, more veteran presence on the floor. I don't know if in the locker room he's the one to teach you about the culture of winning just because he's yeah. been in that yeah. franchise where they haven't had that. You kind of wonder if that makes a difference. I, I just got an, in my, can we show it again? Can we, Danny? Producer Danny is telling me we can show it you're again. Can we show it again? <laughs> yes, we can show it. Come on, show Look that side this. by side. Look at that. That's so and good. That's so good. Please <laughs> show the Thank other you, one. Producer Danny. Boom. Oh, that's so good. There like, I think he's studied work. like a few. I love it. I love tapes. that. I think I could just watch that on a loop. I yeah. do want to move on to Chandler Parsons, that. though, because oh, look, the story has gotten so good today, even. We know Parsons signed the $94 million deal with Memphis in July. Still plenty of hard feelings for Mavs fans. Memphis plays at Dallas tonight, and Parsons had this to say, quote, So when it comes to Dallas, you're going to get mad at me because Dirk decided to take less money to bring in a real good player. That what? No, a really good player. And then, <laughs> unfortunately, he gets hurt. That's why you're mad? Sure. Boomy. Look, this is just the latest in what's been quite a saga. If you have not read the amazing ESPN.com article that Tim McMahon put out this morning, <laughs> you really need to go to the website. Yeah. The story details all of the carousing that Chandler and Mark Cuban used to do together, how things went wrong. I mean, Ramona, is this really about where the line should be between a player and an owner? Because it seems like it's caused incredible hard feelings. Yeah, I thought that was a great article that Tim had because one of the, one of the issues that he got into was simply – when, when Chandler was like, he was so close to Mark Cuban that in a lot of ways, the people around Mark Cuban presented it, right? right? Dirk Nowitzki, Rick Carlisle, Donnie Nelson. These are other guys who run the franchise. Again, because and of a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Go read the story. Yeah. Chandler like Parsons clubs is a smart and, man. Right? He knew who to go go hang out well, with, and he right? flat out said, Mark Cuban is my guy. He is a, he's an owner who's believed and supported me, and that's why we were so close. Bought but me a lot of alcohol. Just the... Just the, the amount that they were strategizing about how the Mavs should be built right. is inherently threatening to everybody else, not to mention he's he got hurt two years in a row. So if you're going to give $94 million to a guy with those with that injury history, you better be really sure that that's the one you want to build your franchise around. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think he needs to go back and give Dirk Nowitzki uh, his money. Just a little check. He, he needs to write him a check, uh, give the whole organization back their money. Dirk's the one who, who said yes. Like, nobody's it, it, twisting it, Dirk's arm. You know, Dirk doesn't even have an agent. Cor like, correct. Dirk is just a guy who is honest, takes things as they come. Yeah, but, I mean. <laughs> loyal. Give $94 million to somebody that's proved their, their worth, you know, prior to coming to your, your organization, not based off of a friendship. He so got think, $94 million off of a friendship, not because. Well, well it's nobody what, twisted Memphis's think, arm. I was going to say, they, why do you think Memphis gave him that money, though? Who else they were going to give it to? This guy, this is this is the one guy in history. You could have gone back. No, I, I, you know, I'm sure. <laughs> this, 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 this is the guy too. that I thought our league was like, what have you done for me lately? Like, what have you ever done for me? <laughs>
like, to get two max deals. One of the best parts of Tim's story Hats off to was, him, though. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right. mad at him. You're like, hating, but not also admiring right there. Yeah. I know you well enough to know this now. Like, one of the best parts of Tim's story was where he talked about when when it became clear that the Mavs just wanted Chandler to accept the one year, right, the, right. sixteen million that he had left on his deal, like not opt out of his player option. Um, Mark Cuban apparently stopped returning his text messages and just calls. Just like someone else we know who. DeAndre Jordan? Mm, just, there just we a go. Little just a little DeAndre Parsons Jordan move there. Hey. There we go. All right, before we go to break, I do want to take a minute. Don't hate to Tracy. Well, I never this hate. Is nice. It's a nice story. <laughs> we want to welcome back the Pelicans, Drew Holiday. <laughs> right? This is lovely. He's returning to the court tonight. If you haven't been following this story, it's been a roller coaster. Drew is married to Lauren Holiday. Yes, that's the same Lauren Holiday who won two gold medals and a World Cup title as a member of the U.S. women's soccer team. But this past year, Lauren, who was pregnant with the couple's first child, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. In the months since, the family has seen the baby safely delivered. The tumor in Lauren's brain has been removed. And now Drew feels she's strong enough, he can now return to the court. We've talked about the Pelicans' problems a lot on this show, and they are still real. But it is important to note how incredibly supportive the organization has been of Drew and of Lauren. They have gone way above and beyond, pretty much on every level. And we were just talking a little bit about how sports is a business, and that is true. But one of the special things about the NBA is that sometimes, sometimes it's also not. So when Drew walks onto the court tonight, both he and the team deserve a hearty round of applause. Right, guys? Oh, Welcome right. back, Absolutely. Drew. I know AD awesome. misses you. Exactly. That is true. All right, still ahead, MJ with much love for Russell Westbrook's game Ooh. and his loyalty, loyalty to the Thunder franchise. Hmm. We'll discuss after the break. Stay Steve. I think another thing that you guys should be proud about is a sense of loyalty that this kid has shown to the state of Ohio. I'm not here to try to bash anyone that's not here. Uh, everybody has a choice. I'm not saying that you don't have a choice. Everybody has a choice. And when I saw that he chose to stay here in Oklahoma, uh, I was so proud and as, as Clay know and as, as Russ know, I, was, I, was, I text him to show a sense of respect. Okay, first of all, Stay <laughs> a little Drake in here. Michael's a little sweaty there. I thought yeah. we had like a crying Jordan moment. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what's happening? It's hard you to look at him now. All the way out there. With that, well, he's it. Russell is Michael's brand Jordan guy, yeah, right? It's a big deal. Welcome back. That was a portion <laughs> of Michael Jordan's induction speech for Russell Westbrook into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, and. Look, you heard him say loyalty. There was a not very subtle dig at Kevin Durant there. Tracy, loyalty is such a loaded word in sports, right? It's wielded by owners. What do you think of what Michael said? Uh, I like that he said that because mm -hmm. it is true. Okay. Um, I even was excited that Russ signed back with OKC, uh, being that he was one of the first guys to play for this franchise here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think... This will just add to his legacy that he's steady writing. Uh, when he's long done playing basketball, he will always forever be a rock star in the city of um, Oklahoma City. You know, regardless of what happens, his life after basketball will be great in, in that state as well because this guy leaves everything out on the basketball court. Oh, so you can appreciate a guy coming back um, to join that franchise. Well, I think this is a case of both things being true, right? right? Is Michael Jordan excited that Russ is loyal to the state, to the Thunder? Does he also uh, appreciate Russell's game? Yes, th those things are true. But does he, as the owner of a small market franchise, also appreciate that a star would stay with a small yeah. market franchise after another star would leave? Yes. Guess who asked Russell Westbrook? Guess who asked Michael to come out? Clay Bennett. Right. Like, it wasn't it was Russell. It was the owner of the Oklahoma City correct. Thunder. Who asked them? And, and I mean, that's the thing. Look, I, I love that Russ is getting, as you said, good, good, positive feedback for the decision he made. We do have to be realistic. He only added one year to his deal. Correct. Last year, it was <laughs> Kevin Durant who was being honored at this exact same ceremony, uh -huh. exact same ceremony, and now he's gone. Westbrook was up on that exact stage. A and look, you have to ask: Is it smart for him to stay loyal to Oklahoma City? Because in about a year. 
he's going to have to make that decision. Sam Presti is going to come to him and say, you think you're staying or not? Because if not, they're going to have to deal him because they can't get nothing for nothing right. again. So I don't know. Is this is it smart for him to do it? I know mean, you've talked before about not wasting your prime years, right? I do, and I think you put the onus on the ownership to make some things happen to keep him happy there to uh, to resign back. Look, they, that team was not built around Russell Westbrook. That was a team built for Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. So now Sam Presti's going to have to reconfigure He's got a year on the play. to figure it out. Yeah, he had to play defense. He had to keep the young guys and resign them to extensions because they don't get extra salary cap room. They just have to keep everyone that they have. But now is the part where you get creative, and if they're able to do that and keep Russell and on, on a team where he thinks he can win. Then I think he, he'll maybe, feel fine about it. Maybe that. All right, do you want to switch over to Portland because the struggle was real last <laughs> night. It's real. The Blazers were on the wrong end of a 17-point loss to the Rockets. They're now seven and six. And afterwards, Damian Lillard, well, he voiced his frustration. We kind of suck right now, he said. It is that simple. I, I love that we need a whole screen to show this. Um, I mean, I love the honesty, but Tracy, we all also talked earlier this week when the Wizards Marcin Gortat got a little too critical of his own team, right? There is Locker room, you, you got to be careful of the guys in your locker room, right? Not really, because this is your best player. This is exactly. the leader of your team. This is not like this is the 10th man on a roster. This okay. is your best player, a MVP caliber guy. Kind of jump, we've been talking about how impressive the Lakers have been this season. In fact, if the playoffs started today, yes, the Lakers Whoa. would be in. Chill, the game is happening tonight, Chill. people. Kawhi Leonard is happening tonight. Ramona, you're going to be at Lakers first this <laughs> yeah. evening. Do folks around the league think that this is a game where we could see the young yes. Lakers taught a little bit of a lesson in yes. the ways and this of the whole, world? The whole next week is. I mean, they play the Spurs Friday, and then they play the Warriors twice next week. Mm. So this is where you find out if the Lakers are for real. Look, the Lakers are 7-5, and five, and they're not even good yet. Like, they, I just, I'm on the list right now, okay? How many possessions uh, where the guy is the, the roll man in a pick and roll? Are, 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 there, are any of the young Lakers on this list? I'm going scrolling. They're not on so, it. None of them. <laughs> like, Julius Randle should be a great pick and roll player. Timothy Mozgov should be a so great they're pick. Still learning. They're not even they, doing that, and they're still good right now. They are already. still learning, and they are good. They're exciting to watch. I can't believe I'm saying that the young <laughs> Lakers are exciting to watch. Seriously, I look forward nice. to seeing these guys play. This is not about them uh, getting exposed tonight. This is a measuring stick for this team, just to see where we stand against a really good team. Yeah, we beat Golden State, but they was coming off a of back-to-back. We beat Houston's first game of the season. Right. Let's see how we stand against the Spurs, who came in here and was waiting for us. And shout out to Swaggy P. Defense. He's finally getting it. I like to see that. He's playing good. He's not Swaggy P anymore, by the way. It's Uncle P. Nah. No, I'm serious. Nick, well, yes. Nick Young. Man. Not to, not to Tracy. He's no. not Uncle P. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. That buzzer means it's time for Make or Miss. Make hookbacks. Zach Levine had this awesome jam off of a missed free throw last night. But, Ramona, we had to be a little happy. The rest didn't call it lane violation like, here. Oh, such a lane wow. violation. Come like, that's on. the worst thing, but I still like it. But I'm all for like, the spectacular show, yeah. so who well, cares? I was ready to get out of there just like I didn't want to watch that game. <laughs> Rats. James Harden posted a Snapchat of himself. Not like Draymond did. It was oh, of no. him doing leg presses after posting a triple double in the win over the Blazers last night. You impressed? Do you think he's gonna chill it, T Mac? No, this is what guys typically do after games. I mean, this is nothing. Yeah, but why didn't you do Snapchatting? <clears throat> like everybody knows you're working hard. That's like when people get out there and shoot extra after they don't have a good game. <laughs> Make praise after snapping a three-game skid last night. The Wizards tweeted, this one's for you, oh, kid. Oh, that's the little pole. <laughs> right? Listen, man, fans. that's where they found their motivation right there. Right? The little kid. They need to bring him to every game. Come on <laughs> exactly. now. They're going to win. They should win. The the win. Yeah. Make the A-list. Tony Parker tweeted this picture of himself with George Clooney and Matt Damon after they played basketball together last night. Oh, look at this old Ooh. Clooney fan oh, footage. Oh, good. What are you doing to me? Nice, we got George nice Clooney dirt. and The Rock in one segment. How am I even speaking English? Like the that? Rock, that's nice for you. Oh. I like that. That little bit with the two by four and walking tall. Oh. He went between the legs so with no dribble. That I needed to know now. I like the Clooney Go dribble clue. thing, right? No clue. He didn't even well, dribble. No, that no, was no, like a handoff, a, right? I got me a ball today. Yeah. Oh, oh. Now let's see how Tracy does. Oh, I okay. can't get my arms up. Damn. <laughs> you, the hot one, huh? you shouldn't wear those.